All right, so this is the second video, and this is lesson 11, which is in unit three, code.org, computer science discoveries, and we are going to finish up the lesson on the draw loop. So I'm going to start in bubble eight, and there are four different activities in this particular um, bubble. So we're going to look at A first, and we have two cute little aliens. And so there's some different things we see happening. We see the star moving all around. That's really an ellipse, a really tiny ellipse in the background. And we also see the sprite rotation property of the alien moving around. What we want to see is the pink alien also uh, the second alien looking, shaking just like the first one. So let's look to see what's happening in our workspace. I love how they've commented out so we can see what's happening. So at first we see that this first thing sets the frame rate. How often is things moving around? And that's 10 frames per second. The more frames per second, the more smooth your movement will look. Creating alien sprites. So first we see the green alien and the pink alien both being created at a certain location, um, our X and Y coordinates. And now we are setting up the drawing with no stroke and fill white. So that's going to apply to our ellipse. Um, notice that inside the draw loop is the background. You remember in um, one of the earlier levels, we learned if the background is not in the draw loop, what's going to happen is each of those new ellipses that are being drawn in a random place would not go away. So you'd end up with lots and lots and lots of white dots all over the screen until the screen is covered by them. So if you don't want that to happen, you want the dot to appear to move, and we want to include the background in the draw loop. Then we see the green aliens property, rotation property. It gets the value between negative five. All right, so let's see where I was. We are going, we have the green alien rotating, um, negative five, positive five. That is our degrees. Remember that negative five turns one way um, counterclockwise and positive numbers go clockwise. So he's literally moving between five degrees um, of center back and forth. And we want to do the same thing with the other alien. So let's go to our right. We want to go to a variable and we want to drag in. No, sorry. Let's change that. I think it's this one because we don't need a new variable. We just need to uh, put in the rotation of the other alien. Now I need to go find out what was that other alien name. He is named Pink Alien. We want to make sure we name him the same. Pink Alien. And we're going to use our random number block, which is found in under math. And since we want him to move the same way, I'm going to put in the same numbers. Negative 5, positive 5. Reset, run. There we go. Two happy aliens dancing in space. The next one, we're going to be debugging a problem. The sprite animation is blurry in this blender. Yeah, it looks terrible, actually. And it looks like parts of it is not moving and parts of it is moving. And it's kind of hard to even see what's happening. So I see the function. I see that we've created a, a blender. 
We've created the sprite and we've set it to be a blender animation. We have our background that is being drawn repeatedly because it's in the draw loop. And we are changing our X and Y position here. And they told us that instead of putting in um, like a random number between 195 and 205, they've done it a different way using the math um, with the plus there. So, and then drawing sprites. So they got that with the X and the Y. But why this really awful um, picture when it's supposed to just look like the blender is shaking? Hmm. So, we wanted it to just shake around. Instead, we see blurry shaking. I wonder if there are some things in the draw loop that maybe shouldn't be there. So, when we had things moving around on the previous one. I'm going to go back to bubble seven for just a minute. This was where we had the pencil and the paintbrush moving. Notice that we created them outside of the draw loop. That the only thing in the draw loop is the background because we don't want, we want to cover up the images that um, as they're being moved and replace it with a new image in a new location. And then the locations. So I'm going to go back here now because that's kind of what we're wanting to do with this blender. And so the problem with it is we it is creating a new sprite repeatedly over and over again, which is causing it to just look weird. Oops. That's not what I meant to do. I'm going to go to text. I'm going to put a little space between there just to make it look a little better. All right, hit run. That fixed the problem. Now we have a blender that is moving around and it's moving as a whole unit, not trying to create a new sprite. The sprite itself was only made once. So that is what we want. All righty. So we finished A, we finished B. C is repeated anim animations. This is a bubbly sprite and it should have multiple frames of animations, but it stops almost repeatedly. Well, I can see that in my draw loop, it just says draw sprites. And so, yeah, so the animation is bubbly looks like this guy, but it's not, aha, look at here, if I scroll down, it says how to debug multi-frame animations, which is what this bubbly character is. Some levels in Game Lab will let you use multi-frame animations, which makes them seem like they are moving. We have to add a background block, otherwise it will look like the sprite isn't moving at all since all of the frames will draw on top of each other. So that's what's happening is it is looping, it is drawing it over and over again. However, on top and top of each other, you'll never notice the change. So let's do what the suggestion is telling us to do and add in a background. Our background is white. Yay, and that fixes it. Awesome. Don't ever underestimate the little help features that you have in Game Lab. Sometimes they really help you, especially when you're learning a brand new skill like that one. All right, the last one is debugging. The sprite is not moving. Sure enough, it's just sitting there. We want it to be shaking around like it did before. Um, it is 
moving it, supposed to be moving it to a random number. Um, however, I noticed that up here, it, the draw sprite is up here and it's drawing it at the 200, 200. And down here, there's no draw sprite code. So I'm going to drag the draw sprite code. We want it to draw a new sprite each time. Now, that still doesn't look right, does it? It still doesn't look like it was supposed to. It's blurry. And that is because it's drawing over a whole bunch of other Blender images each time. They're just all real close together. Remember, we have to also have our background in the draw loop. So let's do that. Reset. And now we fixed it. So you had to do both of those things to make it perfect. Um, Where's the draw sprites place? So there's a hint. The other hint is, is the screen being cleared? We clear the screen by drawing a new background. That's how we normally clear the screen. All right. In bubble nine, that is your assessment level. You want to make the salt look like it's shaking salt of the salt shaker. So you're going to add a draw loop to the bottom of this program, move some of the blocks that need to be inside, inside the draw loop and add a feature so that it will be shaking up and down. So if you need to have a little extra help, feel free to look back at a previous level and, and, figure, and figure it out. When you finish bubble nine, I encourage you to um, play around with the challenges, uh, especially challenge A, extending your scene. Use the draw loop from the sprite from the last lesson. Um, and there we go. I'm gonna stop this video here. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me and ask or ask me in class.